Linus Tech Tips coverage of CTIA 2014 is brought to you by AT&T. Having plenty of experience with Oculus Development Kit 1 and recently acquiring the Development Kit 2, I was quite excited to get some hands-on time with Samsung's Gear VR. Outside of the Gear VR unit, we have a focus wheel on top, allowing you to easily change focal distance on the fly, a touchpad and back button on the side, which will serve as your built-in navigation tools, a mounting plate in front, which will allow you to mount your Note 4 device, which will hopefully support more devices in the future, and a speaker in the back, which I personally didn't really get to experience due to loud expo hall, but is probably okay. But due to it being a phone, it does offer Bluetooth functionality, so you'll be able to connect a controller or in this case a Bluetooth headset to augment that functionality. Another thing to note is that there are absolutely no cables attached to the unit which is fantastic as you can now freely spin around in your chair without worrying about any cable snag. This is especially nice for situations where the scene is playing out all around you instead of just in front of you. This freedom, while great, does not come without a cost however. You're now intimately tied to the Note 4's 3220 milliamp hour battery, its 2.7 gigahertz quad core Snapdragon 805 processor, and 3 gigabytes of RAM which will result in a limited duration of single session usage and a limit on the device's performance. For instance, I don't expect you to be able to play Elite Dangerous or Star Citizen on this thing. But to give it credit, you'll hopefully be able to play games like Portal, Half-Life, and GTA on it soon, along with the opportunity for Samsung to partner with Valve on a game streaming app. And while there's no information about that whatsoever anywhere, I do kind of hope it happens. While they weren't able to directly talk specs with me, I doubt that apps available from Oculus or Samsung would directly lower the potential resolution of the device, and we should be getting a similar overall experience in terms of low persistence to the Oculus Rift Development Kit 2, considering that the Oculus Development Team is making the SDK for Gear VR as well. This bodes quite well for Gear VR, as the Note 4 offers its monstrous 2560x1440p display, which, while I have very limited experience with it, looks fantastic. Well, that's about it. I hope we get one of these for the office so I can try it out more extensively, and let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about this kind of nicer audio voiceover style show coverage. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Subscribe to LTT for all of our CTIA content. And thanks to AT&T for sending us here this year.